what's up? Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to dispel one of the rumors that you might hear if you're new to welding. And that's people telling you that flux cord arc welding, FCAW, is no good, is not as strong as stick welding or MIG welding. Well, it is. As long as you follow a couple rules, follow proper procedures, have good preparation of your metal, and we're going to show you that today. All right, first of all, a 115 amp flux core welder like you might find from a store like Harbor Freight for on sale for $89, it ain't going to cut it. Let's just get that out right now. It doesn't have the power to do what you need to do. But a 240 volt machine, even one from Harbor Freight, with the right wire, like Lincoln NR211, inner shield wire, can produce quality welds in heavy metal. And to prove that today, I've got a couple of 3 8 inch plates. That's about 9.5 millimeter. They're beveled at about 60 degrees. I got a quarter inch backing strip. We're going to set these up in the standard test position. We are going to weld them with a low cost flux core machine, 220 volts, using quality NR211035 wire. Then we're going to cut it, macro etch it, and show you that this type of machine can produce quality welds in thicker metal and you shouldn't be afraid to use it on any of your welding projects. All right, first step here is we're going to get tacked up and I'm going to start by clipping that off. All right, keep in mind, since we are using the flux core technique, which produces slag, the rule of hand is if there's slag, you drag. So we will be welding in this way. We'll put in two root passes, tying in our two large plates to the backing plate. Make sure you extend beyond the edge of the main plate and onto the backing plate for a good tie-in. Next we need to clean it. I like to get a wire wheel brush on there also, make sure we're nice and clean. Alright, reset our wire and put in our second pass going down the other bevel. And 
and we'll clean it out. With good heat, the slag comes right out, but I'm going to hit it with the wire brush anyway. All right, folks, there is our two root passes. Clean out some of that brown guck on there so you can see a little bit better. Now we are going to go for our fill passes, and we'll try and get some arc shots of that. For our first fill pass, I'm going to cut the wire. And do the same thing we did, going up the deck. All right, here we go. We are using a simple pull technique with the gun angled towards the feather edge of the side we're welding on. We want to go slow enough to let the puddle build up to the size of a pea. The puddle will dictate exactly how fast you have to move. After each pass, you just want to make sure you remove that slag. Clean it out with a brush. And I like to hit it with the wheel too. Like I said in the previous clip, we're just letting the puddle dictate our speed. We have the gun slightly pointed to the bevel side that we're going down. We have about a 10 degree drag travel angle. Just keep it smooth and steady, and on we go. All right, a little bit of a different angle in this one. I've got the MIG or the uh, GoPro mounted to the MIG gun. You can see a slight bit of side-to-side -side oscillation. We want to make sure that we're covering up at least about a third of that previous bead. After a number of passes, you can see we're just about ready to put on what's probably going to be a four-bead cover. But first, we're going to let it cool.